Okay, so now you gotta notice that every single time we play, nothing gets saved into the inventory. So I'm actually gonna add a way to do that right now. The way we're gonna be doing this is by adding a JSON file. So what we're gonna do is first, we need to create a script called custom JSON. I have to say I did get this code off someone else, so I'm not taking credit at all for this. If you ever worked with JSON, you know that you can't save a custom list or custom item to JSON, but this script that I, someone showed me will let you do that. And what we're going to do is we're going to start out with public static list and then T and we're going to call it from JSON and then T and then we pass in a JSON string and then we're also going to create a public class underneath And call it wrapper and then T we're also gonna make this a system dot serializable which allows us to make arrays and lists out of it and then inside it's gonna be a list of T and call it items Now inside of the from JSON, I'm going to lowercase, uh, you're going to make a wrapper of T and call it wrapper and set it equal to unity engine dot JSON utility. You don't have to include the unity engine, just do JSON utility dot from json a wrapper of t and then in parentheses json which is the parameter right here and then we're going to return wrapper dot items okay and now just one more function to allow us to bring it back as a JSON or save it as a JSON, sorry. We do public static string because JSONs are stored in a string. And then we're gonna call it to JSON T. And then inside a list of T and call it list. And then inside of here, we do a wrapper of T call it wrapper, set it equal to a new wrapper, and then wrapper dot items is equal to list, which is this parameter, and then we return json utility dot to json and then we pass in our wrapper. And this will allow us to save custom classes to a JSON and without getting null back every single time. So now that we're here, we're gonna create a new script, call it save and load. And inside of here, you can get rid of all that. And we're gonna create a public class and call it item load. Get rid of the parentheses. And we're also gonna make this a system.serializable. So inside of this custom class, we're gonna be doing a public int. And what we're gonna be saving from each item is the ID, the amount inside the stack, and the slot index. So which slot it's stored in. And then we're also gonna do a public item load which is a constructor for the class. And inside we're gonna do int id, int amount, and int slot index. Okay, now that we have that, we do id is equal to id, amount is equal to amount, and slot index. 
is equal to slot index. So up top inside of the mono behavior class, we're going to add two things. One is an inventory and we'll call it inf and then a public item array, which is items. Okay, I made the inf private and I'm going to add a void start and do inf is equal to get component inventory. And that'll just get the inventory on start. Okay, and now we're going to add two functions in order to save and load. So we're going to do void save. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a new array of the item loads. So a list of item load items to load is equal to new list of item load and then end it with parentheses and then we're going to run a for loop through it so for int i is equal to zero i is less than inf dot slots dot length and then i plus plus we're going to do slot z is equal to inf dot slots and then we're going to pass in i and then if z dot slots item so if it has an item we're going to make an item load. so item load h is equal to a new item load and then we pass in our values which go to the constructor which give these a value item load and we're going to pass in the z dot slots item dot item id the z dot slots item dot amount in stack and the z dot slots item dot max or no not max sorry we're gonna just pass in i which is the index of the current slot and then from this point we just do string json which is equal to the custom json which we made earlier dot to json and then we pass in our items to load and then now we're actually going to save the json to a file so we're going to do file dot write uh, we also want to use system dot io so go up here put using system dot io and then we're going to do file dot write to write all text. We're going to do application dot persistent data path plus the transform dot name of this object. And then we're going to pass in the JSON string that we created just then. And just so that we know, I'm going to debug.log saving. Okay, and then I'm going to add a void load. And inside of here, we're going to do debug.log loading dot dot dot. And then we're going to do list item load items to load is equal to custom json which is the script we created earlier dot from json and then inside item load which is this and then we pass in the path which is which is file dot read all text and the path is application dot persistent data path plus transform dot name so now that we have this we're just going to go through a for loop and for int i is equal to and we're going to start out with the first item from this index so we're going to go items to load dot zero dot slot index 
i is less than inf dot slots dot length then i plus plus just so that we skip a few slots and we don't have to start from zero and then we're gonna run another for each item load z in items to load we're gonna check the IDs so if I is equal to Z dot slot index. Oh, we're comparing the indexes, sorry, not the IDs. We're going to do item B is equal to instantiate items and then Z dot ID. And then the parents of this is going to be inf dot slots I dot transform and then we're going to be getting the component from it which is the item and then now we're going to set the amount in the stack which is equal to z dot amount and then we're just going to break out of this loop right here now all we need to do is actually call the functions so inside of void update we're going to do if input dot get key down key code dot j then we're going to save and then else if input dot get key down key code dot k then we load okay so this is really important if we go to the player and add the save and load then we have an array here called items items is going to be uh, the prefabs of every single item you have in the game so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a folder and call it item prefabs and since this is the first item I've added to the game and it has an index of zero I'm going to put that inside of the item prefab and now this is item zero. Okay, so now if I wanna create a new item, and this one's gonna have a, a wider or taller look, I'm gonna call this item ID one, and I'm gonna make a prefab of it, and I'm gonna call it item one. Okay. So what's important here is that inside of the save and load, you drag all of your prefab because this is how it's going to know which items to spawn in. So click your player, press the lock, and then grab these items and drag it into this array. And you see both items pop up. I found the issue inside of save and load. Uh, I forgot one line after this. So just simply do items to load dot add h so if i hit j it's saving and you can see all the items get stored into this json and if i hit k they all come back exactly the same stack size and everything 